Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at reciprocal function, the reciprocal function, and asymptotes of rational functions. Now, what we're going to start off with is we're going to start off by looking at what a rational function is. This is what a rational function is. It's any function in the form of n of x over d of x. Now, notice that I'm using n of x and d of x because n would represent the numerator, d representing the denominator. You have a numerator and denominator, you have a fraction, that's a ratio. That's why these are called rational functions. Now, of course, we know that d of x cannot be equal to zero because you can't divide by zero. And we know that n of x and d of x have to be polynomials. Now, we'll discuss that a little bit more thoroughly in class. But let's continue. Some important information that you want to keep in mind. Again, if we want to go ahead and find the x-intercepts. In other words, we want to try to analyze it and graph it. If we want to find the x-intercepts, again, we let y be equal to zero. Now, if we let y be equal to 0, that's the same thing as letting n of x be equal to 0, or just the numerator. Now, if we want to go ahead and find the y-intercepts, this is where the function is going to cross the y-axis. Then we let x be equal to 0. So we just substitute 0 for the numerator and 0 for the denominator for those values of x and come up with a value. That's going to be where the function crosses the y-axis. Then we want to also go ahead and take a look at the restrictions on the domain. Now, Algebraically, how do we go about finding those restrictions? For a rational function, we want to let d of x be equal to 0. If we let d of x equal to 0, then we know for a fact that those are values of x which cannot be included in the domain because it will provide a denominator of 0 which is not possible. Okay, now, how do we go about graphically showing what those are? Those domain restrictions are actually going to be called vertical asymptotes. And that's going to be a very key word. The visual or graphical representation of a, re of a domain restriction is called a vertical asymptote if it's a point. Okay? So, another way to talk about that, and we'll get a little bit more to this uh, as we look at some of the examples that we have, is as x approaches c, y is going to actually approach positive or negative infinity. And that's what we're going to look at as our idea of what a vertical asymptote actually does in terms of the function. Now we're also going to take a look at some tendencies as well of the graph far from zero. So in other words, not where, where, where the origin is. We're talking about really far away from the origin. Now graphically, these are going to be called horizontal asymptotes. Okay? And in other words, as x approaches uh, plus or minus infinity, your y is actually going to be approaching a value of c. Okay? And notice that this little arrow right there, right there, right there, and right there all mean approaches. Okay, so as x approaches positive or negative infinity, y approaches c. Now, again, the reason why we want to have all of this important information is because we want to be able to come up with a graph or at least be able to analyze certain parts of the function itself, the rational function. Now, the simplest rational function that you have is called the reciprocal function. And the reciprocal function is just going to look as f of x is equal to 1 over x. Okay? Now, if we go ahead and take a look at, say, for example, the x-intercepts, when is n of x equal to 0? Well, 1 is never equal to 0, so it's never going to cross the x-axis. What are the y-intercepts? We let x be equal to 0. Well, we cannot let x be equal to 0, because if we did, then you'd have 1 over 0. That's impossible. What about the restrictions on the domain? We say that let d of x be equal to 0. Well, in this case, d of x is actually x, so x is equal to 0. That will then be what is called a vertical asymptote. And what I'm going to do is, the reason why I underline this in red is because your function cannot cross those lines. Okay? So I'm going to put it in a dotted red line because, of course, that's not part of the graph. But it is an indication that there is a domain restriction there and your graph will never touch it nor cross it. Okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at what this means then. If I wanted to go ahead and use this language here to define the vertical asymptote or describe the vertical asymptote for the, for the reciprocal function, I would say that as x approaches c, in this case c is 0 because that is the domain restriction, as x approaches 0, y approaches plus or minus infinity. And if we went ahead and plotted the values for this function, if x is approaching 0, the function, the y value of the function goes to negative infinity, or if we approach it from this side, it's going to go to positive infinity. Okay? Again, remember we said that it is never going to cross nor touch that particular value of x. Okay? 
So let's go ahead and take a look at some tendencies of the graph r from zero. Now graphically, these are the horizontal asymptotes. Now, is there a horizontal asymptote for this? And yes, there is. And the reason why is that if we actually take larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and even larger values of x, then you come up with something for c. Your y values actually approach something. So imagine that if I actually get larger and larger positive values of x, so 1 over 4, 1 over 10, 1 over 100, 1 over a million, 1 over 10 trillion, 1 over uh, a larger number than that. Notice that what's happening then is that this is actually getting closer and closer to zero. It's not going to touch zero, but it's going to get closer and closer. So that's why it's called a tendency. In the same respect, if we go negative this way, so negative 1,000, uh, 1 over negative 1,000, 1 over negative 10 million, 1 over negative uh, 1 trillion. Again, it's getting closer and closer and closer and closer to y equals zero, but never again touching it. So that's why, again, it's going to be called a tendency. So that is also going to be described as a horizontal asymptote. Now, if I was to go ahead and describe this, I would just say that as x approaches plus or minus infinity, y actually is approaching zero, and that's why I have a horizontal green dotted line on the x-axis. Okay? Let's take a look at 1e. This is, of course, going to be a little bit more difficult in terms of actually trying to come up with a graph. But we take the same approach in terms of actually finding all of the important information. So let's say, for example, if we wanted to find the x-intercepts, well, I let n of x be equal to 0. So I know that x squared is equal to 4. Take the square root of both sides. Absolute value of x is equal to 2. x got to be equal to plus or minus 2. So that means that there are actually two x-intercepts. For the y-intercept, I let x be equal to 0. So if I let x be equal to 0, I get negative 4 over 4, which is negative 1. So that's one location where the graph actually crosses the x-axis, uh, y-axis. Now, is there, are there any domain restrictions? Well, if I go ahead and let, sorry, if I go ahead and let the denominator, which is x squared plus 4, be equal to 0, is that ever true? I'm oh, sorry. Uh, this is never true. This is never true. Therefore, what we know is that there are no restrictions. And therefore, your domain is any real number that you want. Okay? And what that means then is that there's no vertical asymptotes. Okay? Because there are no restrictions. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at some tendencies, you're going to actually have to put this into your graphing calculator and just try some values and larger and larger and larger and larger values. And we'll go ahead and take a look at this in class. But as x approaches plus or minus infinity, y is actually going to be approaching 1. So you know that your horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to 1. Now, given all this information here, I'm wondering whether or not you can actually come up with a graph that is, that is going to represent that. And we'll see if you can do that. Okay, that is, again, 1e. So there you go. We started off with a rational function, how to find all the important information, plus some new, very, very new and important information regarding vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes, uh, and as well as restrictions on the, well, the restrictions on the domain. We looked at the simplest rational function, which is the reciprocal function, and how to apply that information to that function, and also took a look at one more example. And we'll see in class whether or not you can actually come up with a function, a graph, that will represent that rational function. Okay, so give it your best shot. See you next time. Bye-bye.